Welcome. Today we're going to learn about integration with partial fractions and repeated linear factors. So what if we had to integrate the following example? Well, you can approach it several ways. You could try um, U substitution. Uh, there's uh, maybe some sort of trigonometric type of integration, but uh, in this particular case, a good choice would be to use partial fractions. The key thing is setting up the integral in terms of fractions that are much easier to integrate. So this is what we're going to do. If you go to item 2, you can take our function and we're going to split it up into three partial fractions. And the way we're going to do it is you use the denominator factors, which in this case are x and x plus 2 squared, and you split that up uh, in, in a way that you see to the right of the equal sign. And then in the numerator, you're just going to use uh, a letter A, B, C, whatever, uh, that we're going to have to solve for. So we're going to have to figure out what that numerator is. And uh, that's how we're going to proceed. Once we figure out A, B, and C, we plug those in, then we're going to integrate these fractions. And essentially, uh, you'll get the answer that you're looking for uh, for the original integral that you see in item 1. That's the goal here. Now, in our case, uh, we had a linear factor at x, and we also had uh, a linear factor that was repeated. But you're not always going to have that particular scenario, and depending on what factors you have determines the form of the partial fraction that you create. So all I've done here is I've listed uh, a couple of different options. In item 1, if you look at this particular function, you have two linear factors in the denominator. And if you look to the right of the equal sign, that's how you would set that up. In item 2, you have the example that we're going to do today, where you have one linear and one repeated linear factor. x plus 2 is linear, but it's repeated. It's squared. So you would uh, put it in the form you see to the right of the equal sign. And in general, you would do what you see in item 3. That's the general form because, of course, you might have a, a factor to the third power or the fourth power. So uh, in that case, you'd have maybe three factors or you, three fractions or possibly four fractions. And you would use the format that you see in item 3. You could also have quadratic factors, okay? And in item 1, you see you have x minus 3, which that's a linear factor, but x squared plus 1 is a quadratic factor. Quadratic factors are different because if you look to the right of the equal sign, you'll see that the quadratic factor has a numerator that is bx plus c. Basically, it's in the form mx plus b, which is what you typically see for the equation of a line. That's what goes in the numerator when you have a quadratic factor. Whereas a linear factor like x minus 3, you're just going to have a letter a or b in the numerator to solve for. In item 2, you have a repeated quadratic factor. So here's x squared plus 1, but it's squared. Your factor is squared. So to the right, the numerators uh, are what you would use when you have a quadratic factor. The denominator is what you would use when you have a repeated factor. In this case, it's squared, so you have two fractions. If it was cubed, you would have three fractions. So again, looking down at item 3, here's more of a generic uh, format so that you know what to do if you had, say, three or four uh, repeated factors. Anyway, let's get back to the example we're dealing with today. The example we're dealing with today is what you have in item 1. In the denominator, you have a linear factor x and a repeated linear factor x plus 2. So if you look to the right of the equal sign, the, the items that are circled represent your partial fractions. So one of the things we want to do is, as you know, anytime you have an equation, the left side of that equation better equal the right side, or you don't have yourself an equation. So one of the things we want to do is we want to um, establish that all these denominators are the same, 
because we want the denominator to the right to equal the denominator to the left of the equal sign. And so we add the appropriate terms to make the denominators the same. And once you do that, you obviously have to make sure you add that to the numerator as well or you've changed your fraction. So that's all we've done in the in example in, in item number one uh, and to make everything nice and equal. With that said, our denominators are all the same, so we really don't have to solve anything there. But the numerators, uh, the numerator is not, and we want to solve for our variables a, b, and c. So what we do is we can basically ignore the denominator for the moment because they're equal and just set the numerators equal to each other. And we do that in item two. So we've set the numerator equal. Now the goal is to solve. We want to know what a, b, and c are. So one way to do that is if we set x equal to zero, that will work very nicely because that will eliminate the b term and the c term. And then we can solve for a using a little algebra. So basically, anywhere you see x, just replace x with 0 and solve. In item, f so now that's good. We've, we've got one of our letters solved. Now in item 5, we set x equal to negative 2. Why do we do that? Because if we do that, we eliminate the a and the b term, and that allows us to solve for c. And we get c equals negative 8. Now we have a and we have c, and we can pick pretty much anything we want for x, so let's, cho let's choose 1 because that's a nice easy number, and then we solve and we get b equals 0. So now what we have done is we've solved for those three letters. Now let's go back to what we had. If you look at item 1, this was our original function, and we set it up with these partial fractions. Now that we know what a, b, and c are, we can replace them um, and we're going to get what you see in item 2. And if you notice, I've added back our integral uh, because that was the whole goal here. We're just basically rewriting our integral in a different way, same integral, a little bit of different kind of form so that it makes it easier for us to actually do the integration. Okay. So what we have, we're going to solve now. And in item 3, uh, when we solve that first integral, we bring our constant out front. And we did that with the second integral as well. In item 4, we go ahead and we integrate. The integral of 1 over x is natural log of x. The second integral is a little trickier. We want to do a u substitution here, where u is x plus 2. And uh, if u is x plus 2, du is equal to dx. So uh, we can rewrite our integral in the form you see in item 4. And then we just do a basic power rule to integrate in item 5. And then we substitute back for u. And we have your answer in item 6. And that is integration with partial fractions and repeated linear factors. Now go practice, practice, and practice some more.